episode 11, Coherence. Uh, I'm going to try to just run this uh, one off the top of my head because, frankly, trying too hard is becoming a bit of a pain in the ass. I apologize if the audio sucks. Um, I've got a, a friend, a local friend, who's volunteered to come in and help me set this thing up so the audio doesn't suck. Um, and if it's too bothersome, I'll just reshoot this whole thing. But in the meantime, let's give it a shot. So, coherence. Um, in order to, to do that concept, we have to actually do a different concept called resonance. Um, and this one I think is pretty easy. I've got some experience in metaphors and it seems to work. So well, for resonance, let's just use the metaphor of tuning into an old analog radio station, uh, FM. So you've got a, a 99.7 is the radio station. And you know, we, it, it, what we're doing is we're broadcasting a signal in the electromagnetic spectrum. We're pumping a lot of energy into that signal. Um, but the, the receiver, if you're even slightly off the frequency, it just shows up as noise. Right? So you're just you're turning your dial, you're 97, 98, 99, 99.1, 99.2, and it's still just static. All noise, no signal. You get to 99.5, and maybe you start hearing just the edge of signal, 99.6, 99 and okay, now you can hear the station. You know there's a station there, but there's still a huge amount of noise in it. 99.7, and bam, you're locked, and you can just hear almost all signal and almost no noise. Um, and so you're in resonance, right? Your receiver and the transmitter are on the same resonant frequency, and bam, the amount of energy that's converted to signal just is a massive spike. Right? So a resonance system has that characteristic of a very low signal to noise, and then boom, a big spike wherever the resonance frequency happens to be. And this is a profoundly important characteristic of reality. Right? If you're in a, a system that has a resonance as a feature, then uh, a couple of things are just straight up required. Uh, if you are out of resonance, then the only meaningful thing to do is to figure out how to get into resonance, because otherwise you're just basically wasting all of your energy on something which is a massive amount of, of noise, um, or heat, if you like the heat-light uh, comparison. Uh, and then by contrast, if you can find a resonance frequency, then you can actually do stuff, like interesting things can happen that otherwise might not seem possible at all, because there's this massive gain that can happen when you're in resonant frequency. Okay, so, so, so with resonance, um, we can now start talking about the concept of coherence. What I'd like to do is really build it up in a series of stages. And I'll, I'll do coherence in the, in the domain of, of people, since that's the object that I, that I care about. Although it might also be useful to maybe switch into other domains just to get the, the concept a little bit richer. So imagine you've got a room. The room has, say, 10, 15, 20 people in it. And let's go ahead and just uh, assign each discrete individual uh, a level of sovereignty from episode 10, sovereignty. Uh, obviously, using an integer or any kind of you know, metric to define sovereignty is already a travesty. But for purposes of this, let's just do it. And so let's say just everybody has a, a sovereignty of, of five. Um, okay, so now, now the individuals are in this group and they're floating about, and uh, two individuals, let's call them A and B, um, they, they somehow come into each other's awareness. There's a, some connection, communication event occurs. So step one of coherence is communication. Uh, and it's a very, very light communication. So let's just say the, the, the channel that, that's forming has a channel bandwidth of one, which is the lowest level possible communication that's occurring between the two. Uh, and at this point, uh, a choice event occurs. Um, either uh, they can um, endeavor to increase their communication bandwidth, which in this case might be going from eye contact to walking up towards each other and beginning a conversation, or they can just continue to just go their own way, and the communication breaks down and they just go back out to the, to the, to the group. So, so let's assume the choice is made. We've, we've now moved into a, a stronger communication. Um, so now what's happening is that there's a, uh, a whole bunch of stuff going on, um, which Broadly speaking, it's mostly, uh, mostly important aspects are in, in fact, endeavoring to figure out uh, how to find what a resonance frequency might be like. Um, various kinds of articulations, uh, language, uh, sending over big packages of concepts, uh, because obviously as human beings, the, the metaphor of resonant frequency isn't just in, say, uh, the communication channel itself, it's also in the state of the, of the consciousness, the state of the model on, on either side, and how those states actually themselves in or out of resonance. You know, so if we can kind of get on the same page and build a shared language and become increasingly uh, sensitive to how a given individual expresses themselves, like you 
You know, how, do, how do I express myself through facial expressions? How do I express myself through hands, tone of voice, word choice, body language, um, et cetera, et cetera, which builds the capacity for doing uh, exchange. And, and I'm going to call this relationship. So we're coming into relationship, and that's stage two. So to the degree to which we spend the time and, and effort and have skillfulness or just sheer uh, luck of the draw, that we actually do come into relationship and we, we shift into something in the domain of, of, of resonance, then what happens, of course, is that the, the channel opens up wide. So let's say instead of a communication channel of one, we have a communication channel of eight. Um, and now at this point, we're, we're entering into something where <clears throat> we have the ability to relate to each other in a, in a generative fashion. And I'm going to call that coordination. So we're able to communicate. Uh, in fact, we're able to communicate quite well. Um, and as a consequence, we can actually share uh, information um, and we can share state and we're able to do things that are near to our mutual benefit. So now we're at, at the stage of coordination. And that's a good place to be. Um, and you can, we can make agreements and we can make choices that are compatible and self-reinforcing. Um, but we're, we're now at another choice threshold. Um, at, at this level, we now have a possibility of moving into the process of actually generating coherence. And what, what happens when you move into the space of coherence is that um, there's in fact an emergent property that, that develops. Um, it, it may sound a bit esoteric, and there's ways that we can actually make it sound less esoteric. Let's, let's just stay on the esoteric domain for now, which is there's a, a synergy value that develops where the relationship itself begins to have its own qualities of sovereignty, it has its own uh, agency, its own perception, its own uh, sense-making, which is more than the sum of the parts. Right? So in, in coordination, um, we get this in a very light way. Right? There's uh, some kind of win-win synergy that can emerge. In coherence, that synergy actually begins to have its own um, uh, sovereignty. And so you might say, for example, that uh, in coordination, we maybe have Increase the sovereignty of, of A and B from five and five to six and six. Uh, so each individual sovereignty has increased. In coherence, we're now beginning to have a process whereby there's an A, there's a B, and there's a, the, the union of A and B. And so A is at six, B is at six, but the union maybe is at one. This is a new thing, a new phenomenon, a new uh, sovereignty in reality that is happening as a consequence of the increasing. Uh, quality and qualities of the relationship between the two agents. Um, now, the, the the next move and the kind of the key move that makes uh, coherence finally come into place is that uh, precisely to the degree that this new sovereignty um, exercises its its agency, so as to reinforce the ongoing relationship um, and the quality of that relationship such that it increases the sovereignty of the relationship, right? So it's a, it's a recursion. The relationship begins to have its own sovereignty. It emerges as a phenomenon. <clears throat> and, and then it actually has the ability to use its sovereignty to um, maintain and increase the quality of its sovereignty. Right? And so now we're in coherence. We have something where there's a, a bottoms-up causation, the individuals in the relationship generating something. But the something now has a, a top-down causation that conditions the relationship so as to maintain the existence of the thing. Uh, shifting domain, uh, we might imagine, for example, uh, uh, organelles in a cell, right? which you have uh, atomic units, the organelles, but now there's a cell membrane, and the cell membrane generates a uh, feedback that conditions the continuing presence of the organelles in relationship with each other. So the organelles in relationship give rise to the potential of there being a cell, uh, the conditions of the cell, though, they give rise to the, uh, re the coordination of the, of the, the relationships of the, of the uh, individual organelles, and this whole thing, back and forth, is in fact coherent. Um, we can also do this in the context of, say, the body, which is just a, a macro version of the previous. So I've got a whole bunch of cells, my own genetic cells, as well as my microbiome and all the other bacteria that course throughout my body, and each one has its own agency as an individual cell, but and together they, they coordinate to generate the possibility space that shows up as my body, my, my tissues, my, my organs, and, and the whole system that hangs together. And, but then that system generates a series of causal effects that maintain the possibility and the coordination of the individual cells. And so this whole thing is coherent. Uh, and, 
and I now have a, a coherent system. And, and that's that, right? So then you can just say you've got, you've got A, you've got B, you've got union of A, of A and B, and you have the ability of the union to have causal effect on A and B, and you have A and B causing causal effect on the union of A, right? There's the coherence, you have the sovereignty of A, the sovereignty of B, and the sovereignty of the union. So then there's a, another possible stage, uh, and I think it's important to get this distinction because otherwise people might throw, throw some flags, and that is communion. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call it communion. What I mean by communion is a circumstance where the, the larger system, and I call it the whole or the union, um, not only maintains uh, the integrity of the relationship so as to continue itself, but it does so in a fashion that actually reduces the sovereignty of the lower level components, the individuals, A and B, uh, the cells. So the body is of that sort. The body is a form of communion where um, the cells do, of course, still have some sovereignty, but their sovereignty as cells is quite constrained by virtue of being in the communion known as the body. Uh, otherwise, they'll show up as cancer cells and they'll be policed, right? They'll, the immune system will identify them as being in violation and will uh, destroy them. Um, and so there are forms of that. Right? That's a, a form where, where you go from coordination to coherence to communion. Um, and you know sometimes that's what's selected for, that works. But it's important to recognize that coherence is not communion. It's a different state. You've got coordination, you've got communion, you've got coherence. And this, this piece is really important. Right? The reason why coherence is able to maintain is precisely the degree to which participating in the relationship actually is a good choice for the members of the relationship. That by virtue of being in a relationship, my sovereignty increases, my capacity to make good choices increases. And so it's a it's a, simply a consequence of my choice. Right? This thing, this coherence, continues to maintain, not coercively, but actually just because it is in fact a good choice for the members to continue to participate in. Um, and, and, and the way that the system maintains that is by virtue of just providing that. Right? So you might imagine, for example, the you know, just a classic example of being in a good relationship. Um, if you're in a good relationship, the relationship is committed to the continuing increase of the well-being, of the sovereignty of the members of the relationship. And so by virtue of being in the relationship, you're just doing better than not. And so it's just a good choice. And by virtue of being in the relationship, because you're in a relationship, you are able to afford the capacity to improve your well-being, and so you just kind of this awesome, constant feedback loop of uh, positive improvement. Um, and that's the sweet spot. Right? You, you don't have to fall into communion, and you don't have to default to coordination. There is this thing, coherence. And uh, you know, this is the fabric out of which uh, any uh, viable future society must be built. Right? It, uh, the sweet spot between agency and communion uh, is coherence. Um, and well, I think that's that. Um, we can talk a lot about what are the tools, the toolkits of coherence building. Uh, things like awareness and, and self-awareness uh, and then relationship awareness. Uh, things like discernment, uh, skillfulness in communication and agreement formation uh, and in relationship building, uh, and strength. Uh, coherence can actually be measured in strength, which is the, the degree to which the, the coherence can endure uh, forces that are, are pushing on it while maintaining its own integrity. Uh, so these are all maybe things we'll talk about in, a, in another video if that's of any interest.